Hey everybody, welcome back. We got another question that we're trying to answer today and that is what is the best video switcher for churches to use for their live stream, for their recording? And everybody's gonna have their opinions. Of course, if you have the budget to spend on like a Constellation or some big expensive $50,000 uh, switcher, that's probably the best, <laughs> you know, that's probably the best. But if you're a church like us, uh, but if you're a church like us um, that, you know, seats 100, 200, 300 or less, and you don't wanna spend all of that money on, on uh, video equipment, you're probably looking at things like the A10 Mini, the A10 Mini Extreme, or maybe some of Roland's, you know, $5,000 or less. You're probably looking around that price range for your video switcher, and you're asking what's the best, uh, what's the best one for my needs? Well, the answer to that um, is probably gonna be an annoying one. Their best is subjective, and so there is no actual answer for Oh, that's the best one, hands down. Uh, I have an opinion. You talk to somebody else, they're going to say, you know, something completely different. There was somebody that actually left some comments on YouTube the other day. They were talking about how horrible the A10 Mini Extreme was, how the A10 Mini Pro was, how they had gotten, you know, three or four and they all broke within like two days. So they were going back to the Rollins because the Rollins never let you down. For me, I've never had any problems with any of the A10s and we've gone through a bunch of them here. I've sold, I don't know how many hundreds on churchsetup.com. And so uh, we, we rarely run into issues with the ATEM and Blackmagic usually uh, fixes them within like a couple weeks if there is any problems, um, things happening. With that being said, the reason I brought that up is because there's some people out there that love Roland, hate the ATEM, and there's people out there that love the ATEM, hate Roland. I'm kind of in the middle. Um, Roland switchers are good. Roland is a very quality oriented company. Um, I do believe that their switchers are kind of behind the times a little bit. They don't have any built-in encoders. They're purely switchers, whereas Blackmagic's A10 Mini Pro and, and on up, the extremes, they have built-in encoders so they can record, they can live stream, and uh, they're constantly updating. They're kind of on the cutting edge of that price range of, of equipment right now. They're kind of leading the charge. And so that's why I like the ATEM. And I'm gonna just show you, um, we use the ATEM Mini Extreme here. We used to use the ATEM Mini um, Pro, but we graduated to the Extreme and I hope that you can see this. We're gonna get down close. So the ATEM Mini Extreme, it has eight camera inputs. We're only using four of them. Those cameras are off right now. We're using one for a single PTZ camera, two static cameras, and then our pro presenter machine. So we have we have three cameras left that we can use that we're not, or four that we haven't uh, utilized yet that we're gonna use pretty soon. But for the ATEM Extreme at this price range, being able to run eight cameras is insane. Um, eight sources, you can do just about anything you ever wanted to do in a church with eight sources. If you need more than that, you're probably using some of that high dollar stuff um, or just going crazy on gear. But one of the things that I love about the ATEM Extreme is that it has these eight sources so I can scale up and do just about anything I ever want to do. Another great thing about the ATEM Extreme is that it has two HDMI outputs, one and two, and a USB connection, two USB connections, and an ethernet connection. So the reason I love that is because with the output number one, of course, we're using the, the multi-view monitor here. Output number two, we're running to um, a confidence monitor, and I can tell that confidence monitor to show any of these inputs. I can tell that confidence monitor to show the multi-view. I can tell the confidence monitor to show um, the program or preview out I can just about any signal or source coming into this I can tell it to show that second monitor but right now the way I have it set up is that second monitor is just showing program out so that I see when uh, what the live stream is seeing on our confidence monitor up here um, if I was to switch that over you can see that this monitor up here now um, is showing what is going live um, on the program out. So that's the reason two of those, the reason I like two USB ports is I can connect one to our computer, which um, I'm usually running Ecamm on this computer, and uh, or if we were running Zoom or whatever, we could bring the ATEM into that, the ATEM signal into that without needing any additional capture cards or anything like that. But with the second one, I can also plug in an external hard drive and record in high quality at the same time. And if you have, this is just the A10 Mini Extreme model. If you have the A10 Mini uh, Extreme ISO, you can see our, our 
Pro over here is the ISO version. Um, what that basically stands for is isolated recordings. So with the Pro here, if I had four cameras plugged in and I was to hit the record button, if I had a, a hard drive actually plugged into that, it will record all four cameras isolated. Um, so uh, it's not just one video of, of whatever I've switched live, but it gets every single camera is recorded at the same time. So I can go into pro production. I can go into, um, what, do you, what do they call that? Uh, post production later and remix um, the service. For example, if live, you know, I was cutting down here live and uh, I meant to show camera two, but I went to camera one instead and I caught, you know, somebody picking their nose or whatever and the whole live stream saw it. And now our video that we have on YouTube has that in it. I can go back in post-production and uh, cut to camera four and completely erase that mistake um, in post-production. So isolated recording is really good. This one just records what is programmed out and uh, and that's that works fine for us because because we don't we try not to make those kind of mistakes, and if we do, we just kind of overlook them. <laughs> Having that extra USB port allows me to stay connected to my computer, but also um, connect that hard drive for recording. And then there's really a whole lot more on the physical buttons um, than you will probably ever use on the A10 Mini Extreme. I'll run through all of this real quick, but, um, but it gives you, you know, push button control of all kinds of stuff. And then if you're running the software as well, it opens up all new controls like um, audio processing. And if you're using Blackmagic cameras, you can control their exposure, color balance, all kinds of stuff right here from the uh, computer that's running that software or um, a computer on the network, really anywhere. You can operate this ATEM remotely um, because it is connected to the network, which is really, really cool. But just running down through here, we're talking about video switchers. So let's just talk about, you know, having our hands on this right here. Um, so up here, uh, you have audio control for your two audio inputs, and it's basically on, off, volume up or down. Um, so if you have your volume uh, plugged in, but you need to boost it real quick or reduce the volume real quick, you can do it with push buttons right here. You can mute real quick if you need to or turn them on if you, if you need to. This is the headphones, so you can mute the headphones. You can reset the headphone you know, processing. You can turn your headphones up or down. There's a headphone jack right back here. And so you have kind of audio control main base here. With this button for each and every one of these, this is built by Blackmagic Design, so they're actually built in the Blackmagic ecosystem. Um, so if you're using Blackmagic cameras, you can actually control the, uh, the exposure of each individual camera right here from push button, right? You can control the black level, you control uh, the shutter, you control focus, you can control uh, the gain, um, all right here from these up and down controls for every single one of your cameras. Um, I don't believe this works for, well, let's just, let's just see. Um, camera one, let's see if we, can, uh, if we can turn the gain up. Yeah, it's not, it's not impacting our PTZ camera. So um, pretty much all for Blackmagic cameras here, but really cool to be able to do anyway, if you had those cameras. Then down here, this is kind of your, your audio, again, for whatever audio is coming in from this camera signal. For most people, I tell them to turn these off because you don't want the audio coming from your camera. You want the audio coming from your mixer, which is gonna be controlled up here on one of these. Um, so most of the time it's off. Um, except, you know, exception like in number four, you can see we have Pro Presenter running into number four. Every now and then Pro Presenter is uh, going to play a movie that we want audio to, to come through. We can turn that on and then turn it off if we don't want um, that audio coming through. But, uh, but that's, that's kind of all that we use that for. And then down here next to it, you have your media players one and two for stills. You can, you can cut to black if you need to really quick. Um, you can, uh, right here, you have your picture in picture controls. So if you have picture in picture set up for like, if you wanted your pro presenter to be picture in picture in this, uh, with this one, you could do that right here. You can turn it on and, uh, and you can put it in the bottom. You can see right now we've got the same camera doing picture in picture, but that's the pip down there. You can see it move around. If I back up, you can see it's in the bottom left. Now it's in the bottom right. Now it's in the top right. Now it's in the top left. Now it's off. Now it's on side by side here. Um, you can do like this. Uh, there's just a bunch of ways that you can do it. You can turn it off, but that's all controlled right here. And the, the kind of fine tuning of this is done in the, in the software. And then if you have macros plugged into the software as well, you got six macro keys. So you can actually use these to do some pretty fantastic things. 
um, that you program in with the software. And then here is your uh, transition duration, transition, you know, methods. Let's, let's just look at this here. Um, we're going to do this transition and we're going to make it last for two seconds. And then these buttons down here, can't really read it in the dark. This one says cut. This one says audio. You can see the transition here. I'm going to hit the cut button. In the transition here, I'm going to hit cut. You see it, it's instant cut over. But with the transition settings that I just picked, this circle and to last two seconds, if I hit auto, what you're going to see is that transition happen. Isn't that cool? Down here, I can change it. Let's, let's do like a slide out to the right and see what that looks like. Oh, I pushed the button too early. So you can kind of see that dip to color or fade. And it's really cool. And you can control all of these uh, kind of preset uh, transitions here. And then you trigger them by the auto button. Auto basically means, you know, the old T-bar. Uh, you hit auto there. And then here is uh, control for everything that's going out of HDMI output one, which is basically here. So if I want to show just camera one here and get a big up close view of that, you can see that I'm now showing camera one. If I wanted to hit uh, the number four here and just show camera four, because that's the only uh, cameras we have going, I've got that. I can look at uh, what's going on with, uh, with uh, preview. That's the preview, what's going on with program, or just go back to multi-view and uh, see all of that there. Um, up here, there's so much that you can do with this thing. Up here, you've got your keys. Um, you can turn the keying on and off, and uh, it, does, it does the green screen or chroma keying. You can actually do that on this, and you can turn it on or off here. You got controls, and then up here is kind of your advanced call, like super source. Um, the things that you set up to do with super source, uh, to do animations, to do, you know, custom layouts, different signals coming in and doing, it's just, you can do all of that with pushes of buttons and control all of that. This is kind of advanced for us, so we don't even use them, but uh, you can do advanced stuff there as well. And that's all push button. And then you have all kinds of stuff um, on the software control. The software control opens up even more advanced features of the A10 Mini. So that's why I like the A10 Mini Extreme. It's simple enough that uh, our volunteers can run it without having any kinds of headaches. Matter of fact, it's really push button simple. You tell them come in and push this button to switch. And uh, normally they're just hitting the big buttons, one, two, three, and four. Um, and it's that simple. You can get very complex with it and do all kinds of advanced broadcast kind of feature things. And uh, that's all done in that little bitty piece of equipment. And so that's why I like it. It's compact, it's full of features. They're always upgrading it. They're always working on it. They're coming out with new stuff all the time. And so for me, the best switcher for a church, unless you're gonna pay big money, would probably be the A10 Mini Extreme, maybe the A10 Mini Extreme ISO if you do a lot of post-production. But, uh, but that's, that's my opinion. I'm curious what your opinion is. You can feel free to leave your opinion in the comments. Let me know which switcher you think is best for churches as an all around, um, you know, every church's needs are different, but what's your favorite for church use, why? And uh, if it's not the A10 Mini Extreme, maybe give me some reasons why you think uh, your uh, favorite is better compared to the A10 Extreme. We'd love to hear your comments and, uh, and any questions that you have, feel free to leave those as well. God bless you. If you need a live streaming equipment, go to churchsetup.com and uh, we'll help you out there. I'll see you on the next video.